recordings of all the press conferences. You can find them in the Digital Media Hub, which is ncaa.veritone.com. Transcripts are being provided by ASAP. Those are being posted shortly after each press conference. And I think they're also making hard copies and putting them in the workspace. So UConn should be here very shortly. All right, we have UConn up on the podium. Huskies advance to Sunday. They will play Northwestern. In a second round game, we have head coach Dan Hurley. We have grad guard Tristan Newton. We have sophomore center Donovan Klingen. We'll start with an opening statement from coach, then we'll go to questions for the student athletes. Dismiss them, go to questions for coach. But coach, if you want to start. Yeah, love the, uh, obviously love the start. Uh, it's exactly how you want to start a game like this, where you know, you're, you're uh, you're in March Madness, you know the history of these, you know, number ones or high seeds and just they took away all hope uh, in that game from them early on with the defense, with the, with the offense, with the uh, relentlessness. So um, that's a pretty good first performance. Okay, questions for the student athletes. No question. Okay, we'll start up here in front. Go ahead. Yeah. Tristan, Donald Morey from the Hartford Current. It looked early in the start that Coach was talking about, like you guys had the, the lob pass uh, anytime you wanted it. Was that kind of the plan coming in to kind of <clears throat> establish that and then work off that? Uh, I mean, you know, coaches do a great job putting us in positions to make plays for others, and uh, uh, coach gives me the freedom to make the read, so, and he gives me a lot of options, so um, there's either a drift, a lob, or, um, you know, something will be open. You know, coach told us to uh, just play our offense and we'll break down the defense, so uh, that's what we did, and the lob was open early and throughout the whole game, so just read what's going on. We have two great lob finishers in Donovan and Sampson, and just make the read off the screen. We'll stay here right in front of me, row one, Jaden. Donovan, Jaden Daly, Daly Dosa Hoops. Last year, playing behind Adama gave you a, a little different perspective going into the tournament. Now, with more of a larger role expected from you, how much did that experience prep you for this season? And Tristan, can you follow up on what you've seen from him and how last year has helped him out? Yeah, I mean, you know, Adama prepared me for, for everything the way that, you know, we battled against each other every day in practice and, you know, how, how hard he plays and, you know, just watching him on the floor and seeing the role that I had to, you know, step into when, you know, he came off the floor, um, you know, so, you know, just playing behind him and seeing how dominant he was and everything that worked for him um, definitely helped me, you know, coming into today, coming into this tournament, just realizing that, you know, Dama was very dominant last year and led us, you know, throughout the tournament. So, you know, I'm just trying to carry on that role of being as dominant as I can, as impactful as I can, and, you know, just trying to help my team win. Tristan? Uh, yeah, Donovan has grown in so many aspects of the game. You know, he's a, he's a great leader for us, and, you know, he dominates the paint, plays great defense. So, um, you know, the, the role that Adama had last year really helped him out, and, you know, he stepped up big this year, and, and that's what we need from him throughout the whole tournament. Any other questions for the student athletes? We'll go here. We'll go row three on the end, and then we'll go to Zach on row three. For both the players, does it feel different taking the court as the defending champions this year as opposed to last year? Let's start with Tristan, and then we'll go to Donovan. Um, I wouldn't say so. You know, last year, um, we, we, I mean, we go into every game expecting to win. So um, I don't think coming from last year, winning the whole thing, is it, it feels any different. You know, it's a winner go home game every season. So uh, to, to me personally, it feels the same. Yeah, I mean, I felt like, you know, we just attacked it like a regular game, just trying to go out there and beat, you know, beat our opponent. Obviously, we know what's on the line, you know, it's win or go home. But, um, you know, we really don't think about, you know, just what happened last year. We're really just trying to, you know, achieve a new goal this year with this team and, um, you know, really just trying to attack it one game at a time. All right, we'll stay on this side in row three and then we'll come down to row two. So if you can hand it back first, and then, yep, then we'll come to you next. Zach Brazil and New York Post, for either of you guys, what, what has stood out to you about, about uh, Castle and 
just how, you know, he's obviously a highly rated freshman, um, and just kind of how he's seamlessly fit with you guys this year. Let's yeah. start with Donovan, and then we'll go to Tristan. Um, you know, I feel like his toughness and, you know, his willing to stop the other team's best player, um, you know, he really just wants to guard at a high level. And, you know, in the locker room today, he just came in at halftime and was like, you know, I'm trying to hold this guy to zero. Um, you know, so really, you know, he's just such a unique player in the way that way that he guards, you know, how tall and strong he is. And, you know, on the offensive end, he's, you know, setting ball screens, coming off ball screens, getting to the rim, finishing strong. And, you know, he's just an all around team player, offensive rebounding, you know, just, you know, he saw that dunk where he missed and got his own rebound, and put it back up. You know, he's just willing to make, you know, multiple efforts. And, you know, he's a really big part to this team. Tristan. Yeah, I mean, like Dominic said, he goes out there and guards the best perimeter player every day. And um, I don't think he gets enough credit for that because he sacrifices the offense and, you know, looking good for everybody else just to um, stop their best player. He's, he's um, maximizing his role and he, he's helping us a lot. So um, he's really improved throughout the season. Last two for student athletes, first one here and then down there. Go ahead. You guys had a pretty good game. Is there, are there any areas that you want to work on before round two? Start with Tristan. Yeah, definitely. Um, they shot 20 free throws. We have to we have to guard without fouling, and um, you know the defense was spotty at times. I mean, not the defense. The rebound was spotty at times. So um, I feel like those are the two areas that we need to work on the most. Donovan. Yeah, I mean, I feel like just you know rebounding the ball. Um, you know, going to Sunday playing the Big Ten team rebounds the ball well. Um, you know, I just you know me and everyone else just gotta you know really attack the ball with two hands. You know, on the defensive end and. You know, to be able to push in transition and, you know, really, like Tristan said, just, you know, guard without fouling and, you know, play smart. All right, other side of the room here in the front row. Go ahead. Yes, I'm Bill Hathaway from Local Talk North. Uh, this uh, message uh, for Tristan. Give me your feelings and your perspective about today's game. Uh, we got out to a fast start like we wanted to. We played uh, great three-point line defense. That's what the emphasis was going into the game, uh, stopping the front three-point line because they're a good three-point shooting team. And, um, I feel like we moved the ball effectively and turned the ball over, um, let, well, more than we wanted to. But, um, you know, I feel like it was a pretty good game, but we have areas to improve on. All right, Tristan Donovan, we appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you guys on Sunday. Sure. All right, we'll take questions for Coach Hurley. We'll start a far side in the, on the end, row four. And then we'll come up to row one on that same side. Hey, Dan, Ralph Russo from AP. You know, it almost sounds a little cliche, that idea. If, if you let these underdogs hang in the game, they get, they get confident. But it does sound like you, that may have been part of the messaging to the team, this fa like emphasizing that kind of spe fast start. Can we get Coach Hurley's microphone hello, on, hello. please? There Am we I go. On? All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, that's what everybody wants to do in this tournament. It doesn't always work out like that. Um, so that's not exactly like you know, high level coaching. Everyone wants to start fast, um, but they just had our respect at a high level coming in. I respect the heck out of Donnie uh, and his staff, and uh, you know they won at Central Florida this year. You know they played the three bye games. Obviously the Houston opener, you know they got jumped, and then uh, but then they you know they you know they they won at Central Florida, and they were right there versus Cincinnati on the road. So. You know, this week we were, uh, you know, we were nervous about the matchup because of the shooting, and it wasn't just the backcourt, which is tremendous. They had shooting all over, uh, and they had size at center. So I, I thought we had, uh, you know, I thought they should have been a 15 seed um, for me. Uh, I, I thought they were the hardest 16, um, and as the overall number one seed, I, I was surprised that, in my opinion, you know, that we got the, the best 16. We'll stay on that same side in the first row. Go ahead. Dave Borges, Hearst, Connecticut Media. Dan, did, was it good for you to see some zone there? And you saw some in the Big East, but not a whole lot. But um, and how do you feel like you did against it? Because I know there are one or two sequences where you didn't look too happy. Yeah, I didn't. And, and they, you know, they mixed them up, and that's what they do: some one three one, some some two three, some three two, some switching one through four, some switching one through five, on ball, off ball. They did a lot of different things out there. Uh, Obviously, at halftime with the 15 assists, two turnovers, we were shooting 70%. Um, you know, it was hard to be disappointed about a bunch of things there. But, you know, second half, human nature kicked in a little bit. 
Um, you know, obviously, you know, we, we missed some really good opportunities and some good shots and weren't able to sustain, you know, the level that we played at offensively in the first half. But, uh, you know, overall, there's so much pressure. We all felt a lot of pressure going into this game. Uh, you know, it, it's hard not to, um, as great as you feel about your team, because, you know, you just don't want to be the, you know, that, that one seed that, especially with the, you know, our last, you know, the last year that we've had since this time last year. Um. Okay, come to this side of the room on the aisle, row two with Adam. Dan, did you or your team watch the Kentucky game? Did you talk to them about it at all? And, you know, as far as an upset, and what is the art to balancing integrating talented freshmen with older players, which You've obviously done well, and some other teams have struggled. Yeah, I think you, you know, number one, you got to insulate, you know, big time freshmen like, you know, S Steph Castle, you know, ar around the core of returners to your program every year and then supplement, you know, w with the portal. Um, so you, you, you can't miss on high school kids, you can't miss on player development. Um, I think you got to do it in a strategic way. And then obviously, Jalen Stewart, you know, is another freshman that, you know, right now it's helping us as a freshman, but then has a chance to be a star as a sophomore. You know, so I just think there's there's a timing and a planning uh, that that comes that that, that you know the, the way that you construct and architect uh, your roster, and it's got to be a mix of portal, you know, high school players insulated by also a core of returners to your program, and you know, I, I didn't we, we we know what this tournament's all about. I mean, we we stay bulletproof by being a lead on offense, a lead on defense, a great rebounding team. Um, and then obviously the preparation with Kamani Young with the scout today to do what we did defensively versus a very, very hard to guard, top 100 offensive team, it was impressive. We'll stay on this side in row three in the middle. Uh, Zach Brazil in your post. Dan, do you, do you think you can win with, in this day and age, do you think you can, teams can win with one in, group of one and done freshmen or do you think now you need that experience to win? Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting now, I guess, the, you know, the G League Ignite, uh, I guess that thing shut down. So, you know, maybe maybe more, you know, more of those difference making five stars. I think it just, a lot of it depends on the mentality, I guess, the culture of your program, the, the mentality of the kids, you know, that you recruit. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, um, there's a lot of pressure in these NCAA tournament games. It's unlike anything else in sports for these freshmen, man, to uh, you know, to go on the court and to be a two seed versus a 15 or a three versus a 14, and the arena turns on you as the higher seed, and now you're surrounded by just a bunch of other young, talented freshmen that have never swam in these, these shark-infested waters, man. That's where, you know, I think Steph Castle and the way that we have our situation set up is uh, he's got some men around him out there uh, and just a great mix of youth experience and a core of returners that understand the culture. We'll do two more questions. We're going to go on this side, row two. Raise your hand just real quick so Coach knows. Okay, go ahead. And then Hi. we'll come back here. Hi, Dan. Uh, Connor Sargent, The Daily Campus. And I just had a quick question for you concerning um, when you come into this game, obviously it's do or die. But coming in, you were favored by 27 and a half points, and you got up early. So my question is, what what do you tell your team when you guys are up that big and it feels like the game's in control? What, what do you what are you looking specifically from your team to do in that so-called garbage time? Foot on gas, foot up. We'll finish. Uh. Last question here. <laughs> Last question here in the front row. Jaden. Dan, you talked about needing the dominant performance from Donovan yesterday to win today. How much did you like what you saw from the big guy? Donovan was awesome today. Um, you know, you, you, you see the, you know, he's just a game changer, what he creates for us on offense, you know, how he spooks people at the rim, the, the rebounding presence, uh, you know, the fire and the life that he shows up with every day. And, you know, just to have the balance around him, to have five starters today, you know, eight, eight attempts, 11 attempts from four guys, you know, our All-American point guard only took eight shots in this game. Obviously, the strength of this team is is just the versatility of the five starters, and obviously, you know, six through eight now on the bench is giving us big-time stuff. But Donovan is, uh, you know, he's the centerpiece. 
All right, Coach, we appreciate Thank it. Thank you. We'll see you Sunday. UConn locker room is open, players and coach, for another probably 15 minutes or so.